Okay, this is the first in a series of concept videos. First of all, I will explain what we've got on the screen here, which is a, a 2D design, as you can see. Once I've explained that, I'll then move on to uh, the 3D design, which I've made, um, which should shed a bit more light on things and should be pretty interesting to see how the concept's working. Right, so first of all then, um, this is a 2D design of a hub that I dreamt up. This is the very sort of beginning ideas of what I wanted. Um, at the moment, there's loads and loads of stuff on here which isn't right. There's loads of things which are, you know, would be impossible to, to make in the real world and just which wouldn't work. But I wanted to get the sort of basic structure down so I could then start fine tuning it and, and adding things and inventing things as, we, as I go along. So um, I'll explain what we've got on the screen here first so that you can understand where I'm coming from. This design is a kind of mixture of features from a variety of different hubs that I have used over the years. Um, it takes some of the features that I like from those hubs and puts them all together into this initial idea. Okay, so just explaining it overall then, we'll start from this side. This is the drive side, of course, so that's the free body unit here. This is the end cap, okay, the drive side end cap. This is um, a 6803 bearing here. This axle goes all the way through. This is a 6803 bearing here, a 6903 bearing here, and another 6803 bearing here. Now, the thing with these bearings is they're all 17 mil bore, which is pretty convenient. Um, so the axle is 17 mil all the way through. These little bits here are shoulders on the axle. I'm not even sure this will work yet. Um, it could be completely wrong for the bearing arrangement, um, but I just thought I'd put it in there just to get things going. Now, my idea is to have uh, the drive side end cap screw on, which will lock the uh, locating bearing, which is this one, in place. Then the axle will go all the way through, and then the non-drive side uh, end cap will have a little gap here, a little void, to allow for uh, thermal expansion. Now, this shoulder here sort of won't allow that to happen at the moment, unless the entire bearing unit slides back and forward on this little surface here. Again, something I've got to work through. Um, this end cap looks like it just sort of slides on at the moment. I did have the idea to make it an adjust, an adjustable thing, a bit like the extra light one. Haven't worked all that out yet. Um, looking at this part then, this is the uh, the shell, the hub shell. The 6903 bearing sits into the hub shell. Um, this is the drive side flange. This is the non-drive side flange. Now the drive side flange looks like a, a J-bend spoke will go through it. Uh, the flange is slightly angled towards the center of the of the hub. This is the non-drive side flange, which is uh, straight pull spokes. Um, so you can see instantly that's sort of extra on that side and sort of, you know, Chris King tune on this side. This brown part is the, uh, the toothed ring, the ratchet system. Uh, the pulls are in there somewhere. I haven't drawn it on this design. This bit here is a drive ring. So the uh, cassette will sit up against this and this little uh, circle here is is a, a seal, like a, a rubber O-ring that will sit on there. And that's basically it. So pretty pretty simple layout there. Again, there's loads of stuff on here which makes no sense probably. These shoulders, for instance, this bit here, uh, you know, there's loads of stuff that doesn't work. So from here, let's move on to the, uh, let's move on to the 3D design where I've started adding a few features and I've started playing around with things um, to move the concept on, all right? All right, so here we are in the 3D design. So this is where things get a bit more exciting, a bit more fun. Okay, so in front of you, um, you can see the axle. Now, what we're going to do here is um, I'm going to show you each part individually and then slowly put it all together so you can see how it works as a whole unit and you can see how each part interacts with the other part. Um, and I'll also show you some little extra things that I've started designing and also how things differ from the 2D picture we looked at first. So this is the non-drive side, and this is the drive side. Spin it around then. You can see it's a hollow axle. I haven't decided what thickness this will be, but it'll be thin. And obviously this is just a smooth tube at the moment. We'll do some machining inside there to, to slim it down. Um, yeah, so there's one of the shoulders, there's the other shoulder. These things are not exactly the same. I haven't modeled those exactly the same, so don't sue me. Um, so first of all, let's put the bearings on it. 
so you can see what's going on with the bearings. Um, so first off, there's the large drive side hub shell bearing. Okay, so you can see that sits up against that shoulder there and it sits on the axle nicely. Sticking it into perspective view so you can see a bit more realistically, that's what it looks like. Okay, next, here's the non drive side hub shell bearing. It's the smaller bearing, again, it sits up against the shoulder here. Perspective view, there you go, that's what it looks like. Then here are the inner and outer free body bearings. Uh, these lines across here are because I haven't subsurface divided this uh, object. Any blender dudes are not what I'm talking about. Um, I will do in time. Again, perspective view. There you go. So you've got the large bearing here, two of the smaller bearings, which are the free body bearings. Axle going through, non-drive side bearing there. And the non-drive side bearing is the same as these, uh, same as these uh, hub uh, free body unit bearings. All right, so back to the straight on view. Okay, so next, what we're gonna do is stick on the hub shell. Now I've modeled two hub shells to make it easy for you to see what's going on. The first hub shell is the complete hub shell. So you can see what it looks like. But obviously when the hub shell goes on, you can't see what's going on inside. So um, because I'm a genius, I have modeled a cutaway hub shell so you can see what's going on. Um, let's have a look at the full hub shell. That's the full hub shell. There you go. So you can see it's starting to come together. If we take out the axle and we take out a couple of these bearings, there you go, you can see the hub shell bearing in. Let's get that there. The non-drive side hub shell bearing in. Okay, so that's how it sits. Looking straight on, there's the drive side flange. I haven't angled this over yet, but I was just getting into position. This lump here is required for the, the ratchet system and of course the, the bearing to have some material around it. This side is the not uh, the non-drive side flange, which is the straight pull system. Okay, so again, let's have a look at perspective view. Looks pretty nice, yeah? Look at that, pretty good. So we'll start putting it back together again. Let's get the axle through. There's the axle. And then the two bearings, okay? So obviously you can't see what's going on inside at the moment. So let's get it back. We'll take off the hub shell and we'll stick on a cutaway. There we go, cutaway hub shell. So that's just, I've just cut that in half down the middle. It looks hollow, obviously, you know, it won't be hollow in real life. Uh, it will be machined out of a solid bit of metal, but it's hollow because I haven't closed these uh, gaps up yet. Um, if we take, in fact, let's have a look in perspective view. There we go. So you can see how that works. If we take out the axle and we take out the bearings, you can see, you can see how it works. It's just a sort of a load of shoulders machined in. Let's start getting it back together again then. Axle, bearings, main big large bearing there. Okay. So next we need to put on the, uh, the free body. I've modeled the free body in two parts. I modeled the, uh, the main cylinder and then the, the splines I've modeled as a uh, separate object. It just makes it easier to control. Um, so there's the there's the splines first, okay, and then there's the main body. Uh, if we take away the axle, take away the bearings and the uh, the cutaway shell, you can see it in all its glory. Aha, I haven't finished it. I haven't closed up that hole yet. But here you can see where the poles will sit and the springs will sit. So it's a three pole system. This is the bearing shoulder, the bearing seat. Sorry, that's been machined in. Uh, the bearing seat on the outer side of course is here all right you can see that'd be better now let's put some poles in there shall we so pull one pull two pull three okay so there's your poles now they will sit up into a ratchet ring a tooth ring so that's the tooth ring there so anybody who knows how a uh, a, a free body hub works this will turn round and these, uh, these poles will slide over these ramps and then tick into the next one. And then when your hub goes the other way, that's how the whole system pushes itself forward. 
All right. I haven't modeled the springs yet, but you know, you just assume they're there. Okay, so that's starting to come together now. So that's the that's the free body unit and the tooth ring. Now the tooth ring sits inside the hub shell. So let's get the cutaway shell back in so you can see what's going on. Right, there we go. That's the uh, the tooth ring sitting inside the the hub shell. Now this will screw in to the hub shell. You won't be able to get it out, but you screw it in. Okay. And let's put some bearings back in there. Let's put the bearing in the free body on that side, and then the free body on that side. Okay. Then let's get the axle back through. There we go. There's the axle in. And then let's put the large drive side bearing back in. There we go. And then the non-drive side bearing back in. Okay. So that's coming together. Let's have a look in perspective view. There we go. Looking pretty nice. Uh, end caps next. So there's the drive side end cap, which will screw on. Okay. And then we need the non-drive side end cap, which is there. Okay. So that's pretty much the basic system taken care of. I haven't modeled the, uh, the drive ring yet. We'll do that in the next video, I'm sure. Here, I wanna introduce a new idea that I'm gonna try with this concept. Um, and it's a pretty pretty major thing. Shimano have tried this recently, and there have been a, no a number of people who've also tried this. Um, I wanted to create a hub system, a ratchet free body system, which could disengage when you're freewheeling so that it doesn't make a ticking sound when you're freewheeling. Why? Well, because that would reduce a lot of friction, uh, means that you can freewheel faster. So at the moment with your uh, ratchet system, there's a load of friction with these pulls as they sort of tick over this ratchet, which will slow you down. Now, if you could take away that friction, you'll just be rolling on the bearings, which will make things quicker. So. I've been toying with a few different ideas on how to do this, and I've come up with one concept. Now, it's just the beginnings of an idea, so it's not finished, and you know, probably you'll look at it and go, yeah, it's not gonna work, but well, you've gotta start somewhere. So my idea was to have a system which has a kind of sliding unit inside here, which will slide over the pole and prevent the pole from rising up into the uh, ratchet system when, when, the, when the hub is spinning forward. Then as soon as you start pedaling, this cover will slide back, allowing the pole to engage again, okay? Uh, sounds a bit mad, a bit difficult to understand, so I'm just gonna show you it. Uh, where are we on my thing, yeah. That's my idea. Now, ignore the fact that um, physics are being denied here by, the, uh, <laughs> by this cover sort of magically going through this pole. Um, basically, what happens is, I'll try and model this. So let's go like that. Right, you can see that it can move around, okay? Now, look here on the, uh, on the free body unit. It's got a, a raised bit, and then here it's got a raised bit. Now this, let's call it a uh, a mech blocker, that's what I've called it. The mech blocker system has a little lump here so that when it gets up to here, it stops, doesn't go any further. And then when it disengages and it opens, it gets down to here, can't go any further. So it has a sort of open and shut position. Um, the idea is that when it moves forward like this, it covers the pole and the pole will just sit down in the system and the pole can't raise up so the whole the whole system just spins freely then when it opens up the pole is able to go up into the free into, into the ratchet and then you can start pedaling again and it will your bike will move forward now at the moment this is sort of sitting in free space so it won't work i've got to figure out a way to have that pivoted here somewhere and then for it to open and close with the movement of the uh, movement of the system just a concept at the moment and there's a lot of different ways to do it but that's that's what i came up with um so there you go that's as far as i've got it at the moment but uh let me just show you this in rendered mode now this might completely bugger up my computer there we go all right let's uh let's get the floor on 
Let's get some lights on, turn some lights on. Right, so that is what it looks like. I'll just wait for this to catch up. Okay, so that might make it a bit easier to understand. Now, obviously I've paid homage to the uh, uh, tune color of their free body unit. And I've decided to do this mech blocker in pink, so just whatever, it makes it easier to see. So that's how it works, really. Yeah, and that's the concept so far. From here, uh, there are a few things I'm going to do. Um, I think the next step will be to uh, totally figure out this axle shoulder system, see if it works. Then work out a, um, a system of locking this properly, whether it's a sort of screw down micro adjust system or some kind of proprietary slide on system. Um, other, other things I wanted to try out as well were figuring out a way to account for inaccuracies in the, the dropouts of your bike. Uh, as I've said in previous videos, there's no such thing as a straight frame and every every frame will be sitting slightly, you know, skew whiff against your dropouts, causing them to be bent over and all sorts of weird, inconsistent pressures to be uh, put onto these bearings. I wanted to make a, make a system which which allowed for the, the bending and the uh, the non-straightness to be taken up here and not transferred to the, uh, the bearing system here. Whether that will involve having this as, as, as two parts, um, where you know this this locking system here is is separate to this part here, that could work. Um, it's all stuff I've got to figure out. Um, but yeah, I mean that's it so far. That's 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 what I've got. I'll work on it and then make another video to show you how far I've got with it. But um, if any of you have any comments or ideas, or or you want to tell me that my idea is just shit, or that this video is, is extremely boring or whatever, feel free to comment. Um, but yeah, so that's it. Thanks for watching.